Today is Thursday, November 25th, and welcome to Slow Home Studio. My name is John Brown, and this is Matthew North, and we have a special U.S. Thanksgiving Day edition of Slow Home Studio. I wish we had Thanksgiving as well as our Thanksgiving in October. I would like both Thanksgivings. I'm always jealous when I always watch on the news that people are traveling today, because I always feel like we should have the day off, but we don't. No, no, somebody has to stay here and work, so I guess that's... It's all of us up here. So we're going to help uh, Marta in Toronto today. She wrote to us a little while ago with a question. Um, do you want to... Uh... Yeah, she's thinking about buying a townhouse, and she says, uh, I know that angled walls aren't very popular in, slow -ho in the slow home world. No, they're certainly not. No, certainly not. But I didn't think that they were so bad in this situation. What do you think? Is this a good home to buy? And Marta in Toronto. So she sent us the plan. And, uh, and this is it. Yes, so it's a townhouse, and it's got a, uh, it's got a garage at the front, and then an entry that comes along through, through here uh, on the side. So it's yep. on grade, and this is actually, this is actually a different unit. So yeah, and that's just, a bit confusing when you don't first look at it. Pay attention you, to yeah, because you think it's a double, a double car garage, but it's really not. So let's just walk through the plan and, uh, and see. We've got a porch. Uh, we come into an entry that shares with the garage as well as the front door. There's a closet. I'm sure you're going to have some comments about that closet. I certainly will. Uh, the laundry is on the one side, over on this side. And then we have a hallway yep. that is the main diagonal element. Yep. And then another hallway that takes us into the master bedroom here. We've got a bedroom, two here, and then two bathrooms, one that's a family bath, and then one that's here as the, as the master bath. Coming into the main living space, we have a kitchen with an island, a dining space, and then a, an angled living area that takes us out to a deck. Yeah. So what do you think? Well, I have to say it's not so bad. No, it's not. I mean, not. I, I really think that this is not one where the uh, geometry ruins the entire plan. We've seen yeah. floor plans through the Slow Home Project where the geometry actually ruins every space in the plan. This doesn't. I mean, I'm not a big fan of diagonals, and I don't think the designer actually needed to do the diagonal in the hall. However, having said that, the spatial arrangement of the organization is pretty good. I mean, the, the way that the, the bedrooms are grouped together, the bathrooms are consolidated in the darkest part of the plan. They don't need light back there. No. So that makes a lot of sense. I really like the layout of the kitchen. I think it's a very well-proportioned kitchen for the size of the unit. I think that the angled wall in the living room, we, that's workable. I mean, there is a way of doing the furniture layout and making that work. It's not so bad. Sure, there's a couple little triangular bits, you know, a little couple little funny things in the in the hallway. There's a triangular niche, you know, and and maybe a little bit of wasted space in the laundry and uh, a little bit of wasted space in the closet. But overall, I don't think that the geometry in this plan is a, is a deal breaker. And I I think that there's enough good things about the plan to make it worth uh, while for you to uh, really consider purchasing it. I agree. I think that I, I particularly like the way the bathrooms are organized. Yeah. And I, I take your point that they're, it's smart from an organization point of view that they're located at the back of the house where it's dark. But also, if we just look at the way the master bath works, we've got, we've got coming through here, it would be nice if you could get a, a door on there, I think. But uh, maybe there's a slider. Yep. But you've got this this uh, this vestibule space that has the the sinks, the sinks which is which, which is, is a nice. great thing to look at. That's from, right from the bedroom. It is, and then on one side you've got the closet, and on the other side you've got the wet area. This yep. is certainly modest. It's you know it's a little tight, but you've got a shower and uh, and the toilet, and I think that that, uh, that that works actually quite nicely. I think it works really well, and I think that the uh, the location of the family bath is appropriate for both a guest bathroom. And That's right. For um, the bed, for the second bedroom, it combines it can, it's accessible combines and both private. Accessible and private, and it's also not directly viewed from the main, uh, you know, from the main living or dining spaces. So I think it's a, it's really well done. You know, and I think the bedrooms have have good access to light. It's nice yep. that they're all sharing that deck. Yep. And, and the hierarchy, the proportion between the master and the bedroom too is is appropriate. That's right. This one's bigger, and the other one's smaller. Yep. I have a bit of a concern about the dining. And again, I don't think it's fatal. But I do think that it's a little unfortunate that if you think about putting it a table in, the in there, it's right in the middle of the circulation. And yep. coming around, it's going to be, yep. it's going to be tight. And I, I'm curious about what this is there. I bet that's just a bulkhead. But this feels it's going to be a little hard to how you would organize. How would you organize the furniture? Oh, there? gosh, you're putting me on the spot. I don't know if I can do this here. 
But I think, oh, uh, so I think what I would do is I would probably have the sofa go something like that and then have a chair there and organize it so the focal point was towards that wall and then there's still enough circulation space in behind to get out to the deck. So I would probably do that. Unfortunately, it means that this is a bit of wasted space there, but I think you're going to want your furniture to be organized towards that wall because that's where you're going to put your TV and that would make the most sense to me from a furniture layout. I think that's good and what's interesting about that is it's actually counterintuitive because I think most people would face it the other way and they would put the furniture, that furniture against the back wall and look out the window, but yeah. that's going to cause some problems. It's going to cause circulation problems and a bit of awkwardness I think with, with, uh, with that angled wall. So I mean I suppose if you really wanted to do it you could, let's just see if this works, you could have something that did that, like that and then another and a chair over on that side with a right yeah that would work too I mean it's it really comes down to sort of function but I could imagine in this space that you could do something quite nice with that wall and compose it so it's you know so it becomes a feature wall in the space and, and it's well a nice thing to look at this in this configuration would be difficult to imagine how you would put a television because really the focal point in this configuration are the windows. Yeah, and you wouldn't and want to put a TV in front of the window no. to block your view. And in, yeah. and in your plan, you're actually creating a focal point along this, that blank wall there yeah. and organizing the furniture around that, yeah. Which, yeah. which then allows this to be sort of secondary. So it kind of depends yeah. on what, that, what you're looking out onto. If you're looking out onto, uh, onto Lake Ontario, then it's beautiful. You very right? well might <laughs> want to. If you're looking out onto uh, an alley, onto an alley or a side street or something, you may want to reverse you might it. Want to yeah, but I, I take your point about the dining. I think it's a really that's a really good point um, because it is that's that's where you have a little bit of a pinch point in the plan. The entry I got to say though, the entry is one of the best entries we've it seen is. for a townhouse because it's got the shared entry between the garage and the front door and. The door swings work all right, and there's enough room to greet guests. It's Dr. a decent Coke. size. Yeah, it looks it looks good. And I have to say, I don't even mind this 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 corner closet because they've got the door going out. Yeah, that to me is the key. Yeah, they and have it. Yeah, it it works. So there's it's a little bit of space. There. Yeah, you can stand in there and take your coat off and stuff like that. All right. Well, I think that that uh, hopefully gives you this, the information that you need, Marta. It sounds like depending on all of the house in the world questions about location and environmental uh, issues and orientation, we don't know which way this house faces and, and all of that. This looks like, at least in terms of the way in which this house functions, that it's, uh, it's pretty good, yeah. even with the 45 degree angle. So tomorrow, we're uh, doing our uh, preview of the design project, uh, which we're going to be doing live on Saturday. So uh, make sure to watch tomorrow. And we will be talking to David from Windsor, Ontario, and looking at his 1,100 square foot rancher. And that's what we're going to be working on for the renovation this week. And then be sure to tune in on Saturday for the live workshop, where we're going to be reviewing all of the submissions, as well as presenting our version of the renovation. Thanks for watching.